It's Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today is a blistery cold uh, day, but it's supposed to get beautiful as far as temperatures. But we do have um, some very strong winds coming in today from the west and the northwest, which are pretty much open fields to us. And so the winds get really strong out here. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me as uh, we go through the garden today. And I'm gonna show you some different things in the garden as well as the chickens. So here are my loofah seedlings. These are the ones that I'm growing indoors because in our zone, 5B, since it's a cooler zone, um, it's highly recommended to get good plant starts going because uh, loofah gourds and birdhouse gourds need a long season to grow and to mature before the um, frost because the frost damages the gourds. So they need time to be able to uh, grow and mature and uh, things before it's time for them to be harvested. So since uh, sometimes we have a rather short growing season comparatively to what they need, um, it was highly recommended to get this the um, plants going so when they go into the ground and around um, end of May June there will be big plants that will have a huge head start and should be able to uh, grow enough uh, in a growing season to be able to harvest the loofahs so that's my loofahs indoors Okay, so I showed you the loofahs inside. Now I'm gonna show you the loofahs outside. <clears throat> All right. So you can see there's nothing going on in there yet. And this, it's not time for loofahs to sprout out here. It's way too cold still. So that's why I'm growing them inside to um, make sure that I will have some um, plants this year. I did see some other plants over here, so let me see if I can show them to you. So, you can see the spinach growing on in there. So yeah, we got some spinach. Um, let's see. I think that's all I have going on right here. And then I'll take you to the other plants. Alright, so here's some other seeds. They're starting to sprout. We got the peas here. These are my blue snow peas. Or, I mean, blue uh, regular peas. Shelling peas. I do have snow peas that I just brought out. So, yeah. And then we got collards. All those collards in there. Pretty neat. Um, let's see what else I got going on here. I don't know if you'll see it. Uh, hopefully you can. Gorgeous. This is a uh, purple auroch and it's a beautiful purple color. Got some curly mustard going on. Uh, some more mustard. This is Malbaina mustard. Um, my kale and stuff is just starting to sprout. Not really a lot going on there. Let's see what else do we have over here. I told you my colors. My beets and stuff, um, no sprouts in my beets yet. I do have some, uh, this is Bloomdale spinach. Gorgeous looking sprouts in there so far. So um, that's it over on this side. I'll take you over and show you some other sprouts. You can see the um, lettuce growing in there. Look at all those lettuces in there. And I got some broccoli up here. See if we can... So yeah. So yeah, we're getting um, some sprouts growing. It's still too cold for a lot of sprouts. Um, it's just now been getting up into the 50s and 60s during the day. Um, or, High 50s, low 60s during the day. Um, not quite, not quite there yet. Um, all the time. 
There's some more broccoli growing right there. And I don't really see anything else at the moment. Oh, there's some more. So yeah, things are starting to starting to grow. It's taking some time. That's some uh, cauliflower. We got some Brussels going on there. So yeah, so things are starting to sprout. Cold weather crop so far. Um, but that's the way it goes. And then these guys are still looking good. I'm gonna have to do some watering because I noticed the other day. You can see the condensation is pretty good right there, but uh, let me lift this up for you. All right, so I'm going to lift this up for you and I'm going to show you what we noticed. Condensation is great, but look, my uh, plants have dried out, or my stuff. So I actually need to water these guys again. So that's one of the things about these totes is, um, you know, they hold in the condensation really good. But because I have the the, uh, the plants in such a small container, those containers can dry out pretty quickly. So you have to keep an eye on those containers. Right now I'm not too worried as far as um, damaging my plants because nothing's germinated yet. Um, and those are warm weather crops in there. So with it being cold, they're still kind of dormant. But it's something that I need to uh, take care of, get them watered. Uh, that way when it does start warming up, they have the moisture that they need to get growing. So, and I do have more things over here. I actually have turmeric planted. Somebody suggested growing some turmeric. So I have that planted in this small tote here. And I'll check on that later. So, we've been cleaning out my greenhouse. All this junk was in the greenhouse because uh, we use back to Eden Gardening which uses cardboard as a base layer, um, for us anyway, and um, wood chips and things. So we kept this in case we did a new bed, but we're not going to be doing the new bed. So we're going to actually be uh, just burning the, the cardboard and then, of course, throwing away the rest of the trash. But try and get the greenhouse ready. Um, I don't use it as a greenhouse because it does not hold the temperatures in here um, this is a Harbor Freight model small 6x8 greenhouse I think is what it is and it just does not hold the temperatures in the days it might get in 70 in here but um, that's after the Sun's been beating on it for a while but the temperatures plummet um, in here it does not uh, stay the temperatures do not stay really good so I just use this for storage um, my husband's either going to be building another roof over the top uh, because I don't know if I can show it to you, but I'll try. Let's see if I can show it to you. Um, not sure if you can see all the yeah all the little holes here. That's part of the problem. This, we had hail uh, last year, a hailstorm, and it destroyed destroyed our panels. So my husband's either going to be building a roof over top. And then this will be used as a uh, garden shed. Or we're just going to uh, tear this down and put in a brand new shed. Something I wanted to show you as well. I've learned over the past year and a half. Uh, is this right here. Doesn't that look friendly? Yeah. Actually, it is. Um, that is... I'm trying to remember what variety of wasp. I want to say a mud dauber, but I might be wrong. I don't remember so I'll have to show you guys later on in the year when uh, things uh, start waking up but that nest is actually fine um, I've learned that over the years um, unless you're allergic to to bees of course um, but they always build their nest in here and through research and things I have learned to leave wasps alone not hornets and um, we call those a holes with wings okay like I was saying, um, my other battery died. Uh, this, the uh, wasp that lives in these uh, little hive combs here are, are fine. Um, they generally don't attack unless you bother their nest, um, like any other animal or human for that fact. If you leave them alone, 
but they're actually good wasps to have around. They're pollinators and they actually uh, uh, help uh, control the bad bug population. So again, unless you're allergic to bees and worry about getting stung and, you know, dying, um, if you see a wasp nest like this or whatever, before you destroy it, do some research on the type of wasp that actually lives in that nest and uh, see if it's actually a beneficial wasp to have in your area. And of course, if it's in an area where kids play or, you know, could get stung, of course, uh, I wouldn't leave it there either. But I'm an adult. Uh, adults live on the homestead, so I don't have to worry about somebody bothering it. So that's just one of the things that we deal with here um, is uh, wasps. And like I said, it's taken me a year and a half to learn that some wasps are okay. Uh, the hornets and things, definitely not okay. Um, they're very aggressive. And uh, yeah, so um, a hornet's nest is, is different than a wasp's nest though. Um, so, but anyways, yeah, always identify the pests that you have before you decide to, uh, destroy them because they actually might be beneficial in the garden. Okay. So here is the update on our chickens. Uh, we no longer have our ducks. We rehomed them this winter, um, because they just weren't working out for us on our homestead. And so my husband's been um, dismantling the wall that was between the uh, chicken coop and the duck run. And so the chickens have this whole run here uh, that they'll be able to use. Um, and then also, once he gets it dismantled as he likes, he's going to be putting up a partition that's going to go from where the uh, pine tree is. That's what that is, pine tree over to the uh, post in front of my containers there uh, that'll make that back area our, our quarantine area for introducing new flock of uh, birds or if we have an injured animal we can quarantine them um, away from the rest of the flock um, while they're waiting to recoup or whatever it is so yeah so so far so good um, on tearing this down I'm going to take you inside the coop and show you what new is going on in there. This is our newly renoed coop. We have a uh, hen who's getting ready to lay an egg in there, so she's yelling at us. But uh, we used to have our roosting poles were here in this area, and it went across on an angle here. Um, because there used to be cupboards and stuff down there. Um, this this is an old uh, camper trailer that my husband rented. So what he did is he took what root used to be the roosting area and he rebuilt them a brand new roosting area and they're so excited. Our, our nesting boxes which used to be there as part of our um, the cupboards we turned into nesting boxes. He tore that all out because they were getting wet and dirty and we're having dirty eggs. And it didn't bother us too much, but we don't wash our eggs because it's, they stay fresher longer. And it's kind of hard not to wash eggs that are dirty and covered in poo. So we eliminated that by putting these cat litter containers up here. And uh, so the hens use them instead, and the eggs stay nice and clean. So we're going to leave this young lady alone to lay her egg, and then we'll come back and pick them up later. All right. So I'm taking you over here. This is our brand new flock that we got. Um, I think uh, we got them three weeks ago now. I don't remember. And some of the birds are older because we bought them older. They were uh, in the store longer than the other ones. So the, yes, there is quite a size difference. Uh, the big white ones are Brahmas. And they're our oldest. And then we have Barred Rocks and Australorts in here. And that's an Australorts chick here next to a um, Brahma. So Australorts have puffy cheeks. They look so funny. They look like they have chipmunk cheeks because the way of the, the feathers grow on their tufts. And uh, you can see the barred rock here. 
see the feathering. Really pretty feathering on barred rocks coming through. There's another barred rock looking at us. See up. Um, we're going to keep the heat lamp in here just a little while. Um, in the in the days it warms up enough where they really don't need it, but at uh, night it does tend to get cold. So we have this option for them um, if they need to get warm. Um, you know, they have the ability to get away from it when they don't need it. But if they feel, hey, they need a little extra warmth, it's there for them. So we're not ones to say, oh, they don't need it because they're outside, blah, blah. We have it available for them. But uh, they are housed in a old uh, refrigerator unit. This unit was given to us um, by some uh, somebody because it, uh, it was a faulty refrigerator. It actually almost burned down the, the building because the wiring was really poor. Um, so when it came time to get chicks, um, my husband was like, oh, this will work perfectly because um, it's a big open deep space where they're protected from um, the wind and uh, things like that. And they're down deep. The insulation of the refrigerator uh, helps hold the ambient temperature down there um, pretty good and then uh, we can store their feed in the freezer here so we don't have to worry about the we don't have to worry about mice getting in there because it's a it's a sealed container so yeah just another way that you can reuse junk um, we have a brooder box that works very well so yeah I got them all excited so um, yeah, so these guys will be going out in the main pen hopefully in two more weeks. I'm waiting for the weather to uh, even out a little bit because we actually have to get that partition up that I was showing you to make the, um, the quarantine area uh, to acclimate the new flock with the old flock. So we have to get that done and we can't do that right now because the ground's frozen and it's a little difficult to work with. But for now, this area is big enough for them. They're happy as long as we're not bugging them too much. And uh, we'll go from there. So this is the new addition to the flock this year. So that's it for today. Just an update on how the seedlings are doing here. And our update on the chicken journey. Uh, there's a lot more going on as time goes by. If the, if the weather holds, we'll be able to get some more yard work done. Hopefully get that pen done so we can move the, uh, the baby chicks out within the next week or so. So they can start getting acclimated to the outdoor temperatures, have a bigger room to run, and the older flock can get used to them. We probably won't integrate them for at least another month or two. Um, our ices last year had a hard time accepting new flocks, uh, new birds. Um, so we have to really watch that. Um, uh, behavior and make sure we don't have a problem also with our seedlings uh, just gonna keep watching I do have some jugs that are starting to dry out a little bit so later on today when the weather's a little bit warmer because it's still kind of cold out here I think we're up to 40 now um, I'll be taking a, another gallon jug that I made into a watering can and just going around and uh, moistening the soil there and with that, having 250 jugs to do, it's going to take me a little time. Um, I usually bottom water. I use uh, trays or shallow totes to bottom water. But um, with a lot of the jugs, the soil is, on the bottom is still frozen. Um, you know, it's just the top layers that are starting to thaw out. So bottom watering would not work right now. So I'm just going to have, going to, have to go through and... Uh, water individually each of, each of my 250 jugs so i don't mind it today is a beautiful day to go do it um it gets me out in the garden i really can't do anything else gardening wise because uh, the ground's frozen and stuff so that'll give me something to do um that i can say yay i garden today so that is my journey for today i will keep you guys updated i thank you so much for following me along on the journey if you enjoy this journey, please give it a great thumbs up. It helps um, let others know, hey, this might be something they want to watch. Um, if you think somebody else would like to watch uh, my journey or whatever, please share my videos on social media or, or whatnot. Get the word around. And hit the subscribe button so you can stay updated on how this journey is going. So until next time, everybody, happy gardening wherever you are. Bye.